Uh, so thanks everybody for joining the session today. My name is Corey Dow, a tech marketing engineer. And today we're going to cover an important new update that a lot of the field's been asking for, which is the DSF stacking support on the 4100i and 6100 series. So just starting with an overview of what this is all about. So, you know, obviously VSF stacking is not new to our product lines. The 6200s and 6300 switches have been stacking for since their original uh, adoption, you know, into the CX uh, uh, platform. So now we've extended this to the both the 4100i and the 6100 platforms. And you can see the, the platform positioning, as you know, and if you're not that familiar with these uh, products, they are kind of the lower featured part of the product line. So the 4100i and 6100, these are kind of ruggedized switches. And uh, customers tend to order a lot of these things. You know, 6100s, as an example, like these 12 port ones, working with some of the cruise lines, like they buy these in just bunches. And so you can, you can imagine the complication of you have to manage each one of these separately. That was kind of always going to be a, a problem. And so, so now we, through a lot of requests from the field, so we've now added uh, support for the 4100i and 6100 series. And so we just kind of get into some of the details here. So with the 4100i and 6100 platforms, uh, we do support DSF stacking over the copper and fiber ports. And so with the 4100i, we have a maximum of four members in a stack, just like you see pictured here. And when the 60, with the 6100, there's a maximum of six members in a stack. And the VSF links can be one or 10 gig SFP fiber and copper ports and supported in both chain or ring topologies. VSF auto stacking, same as the 62 and 6300 support is available, but not with the stack LED push button because with these models, there is actually no um, stack LED button. Uh, and then there's a new split detect method. If you're familiar with the 62 and 63, you would basically, you know, connect the OOBM ports to either a, an out of band network or connect them together to support the, the MAD or the split detect method. So these products don't have an out of band management port, so they do have to be connected in band. So we had to create a different method for that. And that's what this is all about. So you, you basically, you'll see what this is like when we go forward, but you create a dedicated VLAN uh, and you connect between the conductor and the standby members to detect splits across the, the stacks. Uh, customer benefits, uh, pretty much obvious, just like I mentioned, you know, it's, it's just the time saving and just manageability for customers that have a lot of these things and they need to manage them. Uh, becomes a cost perspective, you know, if you have to manage each, each of these individually. Um, so, and additionally, you know, high availability support as well. Uh, so one word of note to uh, specifically to the 6100 series. So the 4100, as you see pictured up here, you can you can stack the 24 ports with the 12 port models uh, with no problems at all. And with the 6100, there is an exception there. So the 24 48 port models, you can stack these together, but you cannot stack them together with the 12 port uh, models. These must stack together, as you can see uh, highlighted here. And then some additional notes here at the bottom. So uh, stacking between the 4100i and the 6100 models is not supported. And then the second note I, I just uh, I just mentioned. So let's kind of continue on and let's dive into more of the details. So platform support. So again, 4100i and 6100 are new to 1016, 1006 as far as support is concerned. Uh, we support one gig, 10 gig in copper. Uh, with uh, SFP ports as well. And then the auto join reserved interfaces. So this is the, this supports the CLI auto stacking method. So if you, if you pre-configure or pre-cable these ports together uh, in the stack, then you can use the CLI auto stacking method to automatically join the stack. So just keep in mind, these are special ports that, that connect to, to accomplish that. Uh, and you'll see an example of that as we move forward. So use cases, I just want to provide those just in case uh, you're not familiar with the, the 4100i series uh, and the 6100. So these are uh, at least the 4100i is a ruggedized platform, uh, fanless operation, you know, one in 10 gig support, supports a lot of different use cases that you can see uh, highlighted up here from manufacturing to transportation, agriculture and more. So de deployed in, in lots of different environments um, and it supports temperatures 
that are higher than what you'd expect to see in you know normalized lab environments. And then the same thing with the 6100 switch series. It's not ruggedized, but it does support the, the 12 port models and then the different combinations of 24 and 48 port models that you see here. And uh, very well selling product. Uh, lots of customers uh, uh, buy these products. So just what does it look like as far as the stack is concerned? So I've got an example here, just what the ring topology versus the chain topology looks like. And so you just you cable the ports as you see here. I'm using the, the dedicated reserved auto join ports here in these examples. And so you see the, the one glaring thing that's missing here is, you know, we don't have the interconnect between uh, the end of the ring to, to complete the ring, right? So this is the chain topology here. Uh, the chain topology is not something that we recommend for customer deployments because if there's any, it it won't support more than a single member loss in in the in the chain topology versus in the ring topology. You've got redundancy here. There's there's always more than one pathway back to the conductor. And so the exception to that is with 10.16.1006, two member rings are not going to be supported in the initial release. Uh, late in the test phase, we encountered some issues with um, multicast uh, forwarding problems that were going to take some time, some additional time to correct. So because of that, we're not going to support two member ring topologies, but uh, you can support it. Uh, you can use a two member chain topology, at least initially, you know, until we have uh, that fixed, or you can support uh, ring topologies, you know, with, with more than two members this is the thing to keep in mind there. Uh, and then so the multi-active detection here, so that's the split detection method. I kind of already mentioned this. So the OOVM, there is no OOVM on these ports, so you have to use the in-band method to do so, and you'll see what that looks like uh, later. And I've already mentioned, you know, the uh, reserved auto jo join ports as well, at least, at least for these models, it's 13 and 14, as you can see pictured there. And so for the 4100 I models, so they also have kind of auto join ports here. As you can see, this is one of the first models in the series, so the 8117A. Uh, so in this case, I've, I've used the auto join ports. You don't have to use those for stacking purposes. You can use the other ports for connecting, uh, either joining in the stack or connecting uh, up links. And so due to this, I'm just showing that it's an option, right? You may want to consider using a lag interface for, for these ports, considering if you've got the other SFP ports are already in use for stacking purposes. That's just one example of how you could do it. And then the other model here is the, the 24 port model here. So they've got different uh, reserve auto join ports, as you can see, uh, 25 and 26. And so you usually connect the, the the highest number port. I think have this in another slide is what dictates you know which device becomes a conductor. And so that's uh, how it gets configured from the auto stacking perspective. And you'll see that. And then finally, so as I mentioned, these things can be uh, joined together in a stack. So this is just an example of how you do this. I don't know how necessarily how common this would be, but you, you know in this particular example the the conductors, the 24 port models have more SFP ports, so it may make sense, I guess, to you know, if you were going to connect these together or join them in a stack that you could have a conductor in the standby because it has more SFP ports. Uh, so just keep that in mind uh, if you're if you're joining these things together. So just covering the CLI auto stacking method. So again, this isn't new. This is available for the 62 and 6300 series. Uh, and I've already kind of mentioned, so this is what the stack button looks like on the 62 and 63, which isn't present on the 4100i and 6100 series. So your options there are CLI auto stacking uh, and or uh, ZTP. So just to keep in mind too, so just as a reminder, so auto stacking for bring up, you have to make sure that all the devices are in the factory default state, uh, with the exception being the initial configuration of the admin password. And so just for reference, this is how you would configure this as far as the auto stacking uh, procedure is concerned. You cable up all the members uh, and then you go ahead and issue the, the start auto stacking command and that'll start initiating the, the uh, BSF join of, of the members. And so just uh, a word of note here too. So the standby, this is configured later as you see here. Um, so this process of auto stacking would 
just by automatically it would make the second member in this stack the standby. So if you want to uh, configure a different member, you do, you would just complete this process and then finally go ahead with the, the VSF secondary member command to uh, choose an alternate standby member. Again, just more for reference than anything. So VSF stacking, auto stacking is supported with the, the 4100 I and 6100 series as well, with the exception just being, again, there is no OOBM management interface, so you'd have to use a data port to uh, perform these operations for ZTP. And just like any other ZTP auto stack, you have to specify on the DHCP server, the vendor class identifiers from the switch. So I've just shown an example here of how you get that. And just uh, this slide is covering more about what the split detection method looks like and how you configure it. So you can see there's really only two parameters here. So you specify the VLAN that you want to use and then uh, and then obviously the ID. And so this is this should be a VLAN that's not in use uh, in data plane anywhere uh, within these switches. So it's just for private communication between the conductor and the standby. So in this one example, I just use VLAN 999. You can use whatever VLAN that you want and you enable it as you see here with just specifying the VLAN and then the ID and then you disable it as, as you can see here uh, and what it looks like. Uh, so this is a proprietary mechanism. So uh, you can see between the standby and the, and the conductor, they're just exchanging packets here back and forth using this uh, OUI or this, this, this uh, address that you see here. And so that's applicable as you can see on access ports and physical ports, no VSF links. I just mentioned it's proprietary. Uh, split detection interfaces are automatically enabled for spanning tree BPDU filters, so there's no BPDUs that are going to be sent across these links. And as mentioned as well, not recommended to configure any features uh, on these MAD interfaces. They're strictly for private communication uh, between the, the two members. So what does it look like in operation? So I've, I've configured it just like I mentioned. So I've got VLAN 99 as the, uh, the VLAN that I'm used here. It's highlighted here uh, as well as the, the detection method, method, which is only ever going to be VLAN on these devices. Uh, it's configured in a ring, as you can see here, and there's no split you know, active. So the happy path here is split detection status. You run that command, it'll show you that the operational status is up. It'll show you the, the interfaces that are used to connect. Uh, as you can see here, ports 1124 and 3124. And the, ha the happy path, if you look at the statistics, these will all be zero because this really only comes into play when a split is actually uh, active in, in the environment. So these should all be just zero um, once you configure that. But to, to know if it's actually set up to, to perform its operations, just make sure that uh, the status is set to up. And then so uh, what happens? If, if, well, just another status, you know, so basically in this example, we just shut down one of the interfaces. So 1124 here on this member, you can see I disabled that. So this this path is no longer available. Uh, so we still don't see any increments here because there is no active split in this case. Uh, so we won't see any increments here at all. Uh, so just be aware of that. But it does detect that you know that that's not configured or it's uh, you've got a status that's down because one of the interfaces has been shut down. And then when it starts to get more interesting is when there actually is a split here. So in this example, I've got a VSF event here. So I've gone in and I've disabled these two ports, so 2126 and 4126, which created an active split in between the, the members in the stack. And so you can see the status here is an active fragment. You know, we've still got the split detection VLAN and you can even see here, so members three and four are in another fragment. And so we can see the statistics here are starting to increment so that the, the conductor and the standby can, can communicate to make sure that, the, that they know where, where the split is in the environment. Okay, so we just have a three member topology here. So members A, B, and C here. And so we're just gonna go through the auto stacking behavior that I, that I mentioned before. So we, we're using the reserve ports that you can see there, 49 and 50 to connect down. So 50 to 49, 50 to 49, and then 50 back up to 49 on the conductor. 
So this is your actual proof that yes, we can do VSF stacking with a 6100 series. And I'll just kind of zip through this because a lot of this is, is ending up, you know, waiting for the members to reboot. So this this uh, the so member B is going to become the standby in, in this uh, process. So this is all kind of just waiting for things to reboot. We're doing the renumbering just automatically, you know, during the auto stacking process. See the topology starting to come up where we've got just the conductor in the standby with members one and two. And member three is still rebooting. Now let's zip through this just to get things going. So now we've got the topology that's formed there, as you can see. So we've got the ring topology there with the three members. Conductor and standby um, by auto stacking just makes members one and two conductor and standby respectively. And then we do the renumbering here to uh, to make member three the, the standby. And that's what we're doing now. And so again, more series of reboots. It does take some time. 6100 is not quite as fast as the 6300. So the re reboot times uh, are somewhat significant, you know, uh, as you as you go through this process. So just be aware of that. And this is where I've configured uh, the uh, split detect VLAN 999. Uh, just forgive the port numbers. I, I use different ports than what I have pictured here. And this is just where we're showing the status and statistics just like we did previously. And then at the end, I just end up doing a, a split. You know, as you can see, I've got a, a split there with two, two fragments. And so I'll do, that's pretty much the end of the demo. I'll, I'll just kind of skip through the final end state is everything's back up and running once I, I uh, enable those ports again. So thank you for attending today's session. Uh, if you're not familiar with our Airheads community, uh, I'd just like to encourage you to go out and scan the QR code and join the Airheads community today. It's a lot of helpful content that we produce uh, for the Airheads community. All these videos that you see here in the presentations are available out at the community. So just encourage you to join if you're not a member already today.